and hello everyone it's good to see you on this tuesday evening i hope everybody's having a good week so far uh, we made it through monday hallelujah can i get an amen <laughs> uh, i'm just gonna wait here a few minutes like usual to see if uh, any of you guys pop on um, i've noticed doing facebook live that i can see that people are watching but i can't see who excuse me i can't see who's watching so if you are on if you could just leave a comment so i know who you are i'd really appreciate it even if it's a quick hi and hello or a wave or an emo emoji you know all of that is welcome here this is a safe place y'all can go bananas on the comments i love the comments uh, I will say this though that I don't my, I might not uh, respond to a comment right away because I'm in the middle of, of sharing but um, I definitely love the feedback as you all know it's part of the whole fun of it and you know it lets me know who exactly is on here so that uh, I can get excited about it so praise the Lord hallelujah it has been a quite a couple of weeks for me I don't know about you guys but I feel like I've been at war for a while now um, but praise God for victory hallelujah I am here tonight on testimony Tuesday to celebrate the goodness of God and the power of his word amen and he is just he's just so faithful I am just so thankful thankful for the word I'm so thankful that we have you know uh, the word of God to stand on and rely on and refer to and to cling to and to you know press into amen um, and it never gets old you know no matter what even if you read the same scripture a million and one times it's it's like it just takes one revelation to just be like Whoa. It's like, oh yeah, that's what he's saying. Amen. That speaks to me. And you grab hold of it and it goes deep down your spirit and that revelation sticks with you for the rest of your life. Amen. So whenever situations rise up, you can cling to that revelation. You can cling to that scripture and that word and use it. Amen. So I'm going to hop into prayer here and just get started. I've been wanting to get into prayer um, before I do these and I get sidetracked or I get excited and nervous and forget. So uh, the Lord reminded me today, start with prayer. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, all right, I'm going to hop in and, and uh, again, please just comment. Let me know if you're seeing this, if you're on, um, I'd really appreciate it just so I can know that uh, you guys are seeing this. All right. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the word that you have for me tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the word that you have for my fellow viewers, Lord. I just ask that your Holy Spirit would just come, that your anointing would flow, that you would take precedence of this entire footage. Lord, it's not me. It's not Shannon. It's all you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, I long for them to see you. I do this as unto you, Lord, as worship, Father, um, because I believe that you've called me to do it, and I'm just being faithful and obedient with it, Lord. So I just come against distractions. I come against fear and insecurity and intimidation. I come against comparison in Jesus' name. I just plead the blood of Jesus over each individual watching this. I, I just I ask, Lord, that you would be with them, Lord, and that this these words would stir them, Father, that the sound of my voice, Lord, would draw them by your spirit, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for a revelation hot off the press, Lord, that it would flow smooth, calmly, uh, it would be relatable, and it would be informative, Father, and it will be powerful, Father, life-changing, that people that see this will never be the same. And we give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so hey, I see some people. I see some people. If you don't mind just commenting, let me know who you are so I can I can see that you guys are seeing me. <laughs> I, I could see, I was saying earlier that I can see that some people are watching, but I just can't see who's watching. So just give a shout out, give me a wave and a hi and a hello so that I know. Glory to God. Okay, so I just prayed, so I'm going to jump on in here. I was sharing a little bit earlier how it feels like um, these past couple weeks have been war. <laughs> Amen. It's like uh, I feel like I get after one battle and then another battle comes and then I get over this battle and another battle comes. But you know what? God gets all the glory because he is faithful. He is faithful to his word. I'm so grateful for his word. I'm so grateful for revelation and wisdom and, 
and the experiences and testimonies of others that can really encourage us and, and uh, press us forward. Amen. So tonight I'm going to share a little bit about what I've been experiencing these past couple of weeks and just share what's been on my heart, what I've been experiencing, and what God's been showing me and revealing to me. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the last couple of episodes, <laughs> but I've watched them and I feel like I've been like this. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Teach me. Show me. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I see. Okay, I'm just going to stay real quick. I see Charlene. Hi, Charlene. Erica, my girl, Erica. Oh, I'm so glad you're watching. Hey, Erica. I see Carol. I think Carol's on here. Praise the Lord. Tammy. Oh, I see Tammy. Hi, Tammy. I love you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. All right. I'm seeing comments. That's good. That means you guys are seeing me. Great. Okay. Thank you. Praise God. So I get, I get, I'm like, whoop, whoop, squirrel. So I got to get back into my message here, but thank you for the comments. Keep them coming because I want to know that people are seeing this. Praise God. It's confirmation and it makes me feel good. So I appreciate the encouragement. Amen. So yeah, this, these past couple of weeks has been like a trial. You know, I feel like I've kind of been going through one of these. Um, I've shared the last few um videos how you know it's like sorry i'm just i can't see you guys there we go uh it's been like battle mind games man it's just been like battle warfare in the mind and it's like lord i, I just don't understand what's going on i i can't seem to get through this and it's like uh, should i do this should i not do this do i need to be stepping out and doing these videos or do you want me to just say you know this isn't you and i just need to take my hands off it and walk away you know but i just kept feeling like the holy spirit was telling me to step out and as i shared the the last couple of times it was like just do it, right? Just get on here and share your heart and do what I've called you to do. Praise God in the season that you're in. And um, so I did it. And I don't know if you guys watched the last video, but last video that day was hard. Let me tell you what. I mean, the enemy threw everything he had at me that day. I mean, I called my prayer warriors and I was like, I need prayer now because the devil is just mad. He does not want me to do these videos. And it's just been hard. It's hard. It ain't easy. It's hard when, uh, you know, you're stepping onto new territory. Come on. So praise God for victory. Praise God for uh, prayer warriors who can hook up an agreement with you and fight those things back. Praise God for the word that we can stand on that can give us strength and encouragement and boldness and wisdom, amen, to get through it. And so I'm here today to tell y'all, praise the Lord, I got a testimony, I got a victory, glory to God, amen, hallelujah. So I want to share a little bit about what I've learned through that process. And so uh, the title of this message is for you guys. It's called, How Bad Do You Want It? Amen. You guys, all of you, each and every individual watching this, you guys have a purpose, you have a calling, and, and you have, you know, divine appointments, assignments given from God, a destiny given from God, birthed inside of you and you alone that he's calling you to. And he's, he's, he's shouting from the rooftops for you to step out and to step into these opportunities. As I said before, you know, we don't want the devil to rob us of these opportunities to be a blessing to be used by God to to um, experience the best that he has for us no matter what the area is God is always calling us higher and he's always calling us deeper amen and so uh, with that though uh, comes a process you know whatever it is if it's a, a breakthrough if it's healing if it's um, opportunity if it's transformation come on if it's in, if it's impartation or equipment that's necessary for you to to do the ministry that God's called you to do whatever it is the season that you're in it's a process God needs to develop those things in you he needs to work those things out in you and through you so that he can use you and that takes you know uh coming aside and allowing him to do that it, it takes being faithful and diligent uh to consecrate yourself to the assignment that he's given you at hand, amen? Uh, because it's the stepping stones that give us that get us to the destination. It's the stepping stones that release the anointing and the impartation and the, the open doors that, that God wants to bring you through, you know? Uh, so, so we gotta be faithful, we gotta be diligent to let God do what he's gotta do in us and through us while we're stepping out and doing what he's called us to do in the season that we're in, amen? And, and there's something to it, you know, when, when we step out and do the 
these things that God's called us to do. Maybe you're doing something new that you've never done before, or maybe you're doing something that you've started to do before, but you kind of stopped doing it. You were hesitant. Maybe you were um, intimidated. Maybe you were overwhelmed. Uh, maybe you were scared. Whatever the reason, you know, God wants us to keep moving forward. He doesn't want us to get stagnant. He doesn't want us to, to walk away from those desires and those callings and those purposes that he has for us. He wants us to move forward and take ground. Amen. Uh, so in order to do that, though, we can't take shortcuts. We can't, you know, we can't let go and let God uh, assume that God's going to do everything for us. There's a part that we have to play. There's a part that, that takes grinding the gear. It takes that, that dedication. It takes that, that uh, perseverance and that persistence that God's called me to it, and no matter what, I'm going to do it. Amen. And so sometimes, you know, the enemy is going to throw something at you. He's going to he's going to come at you at a different angle that maybe it's the same stuff. It's just a different day, you know, but maybe he comes at you, you know, maybe you're, you're having a, a opportunity to a, a new job, you know, and you've got to learn how to have more patience with yourself so that you can be trained to do what it is that you're doing at this new job. Or, or maybe, you know, what it is that he's calling you, do, you to do requires more finances, so you got to trust in him to be the, your provider. You got to trust in him to, to be your way maker. Amen. Maybe you're believing God for a healing in an area and uh, it's not going to be, it's, it's not so much a miraculous one time event. Maybe you've got to steadfastly uh, come to God for healing. Maybe you have to steadfastly take every step necessary in order to see victory and to have that healing power of God that's already been placed inside you manifest in you and through you, you know, but we got to stay in faith. We got to stay in line with the will of God. We got to stay connected to God and whatever it is that he's calling us to do. And so the enemy will try to rise up and he'll try to distract us. He'll try to intimidate us. He'll try to, you know, scare us or wipe us out completely altogether from doing what God's called us to do right here and right now. But God's saying, don't fear. Come on, don't fear. But you know, sometimes it gets, it's a, it's a new devil, man. It's a new giant. You come, we go from glory to glory. We go from level to level. The Bible says, you know, that when a new open when a door a new door opens there are many adversaries so you're going to encounter things you never encountered before you're going to experience things you never experienced before because you're doing something new you're doing something different you're you're doing something uh, uh, pioneering I mean you're laying down groundwork that nobody in your family has ever done before you're accomplishing things nobody in your neighborhood has accomplished before you're bringing something new to the territory you're taking territory come on you're taking territory back from the devil and he's not going to just give it to you he's going to come at you with a fight so we got to be prepared we got to be ready and we got to be persistent come on how bad do you want it how bad do you want your healing how bad do you want to fulfill the calling that God has for you how bad do you want deliverance from this thing that keeps egging you and itching you and scratching you and poking at you how bad do you want freedom come on how bad do you want to get rid of this debt come on how bad do you want to stop making the same bad decisions over and over and over again it requires discipline and that's a fruit of the spirit self-control come on we can gain self-control we can be fruitful in self-control but we can't skip steps we can't take shortcuts it's a process it's a developing it's a maturing it's a growing it's a pruning it's not fun it's not pretty but it's necessary amen can I get an amen? I just got to hear an amen from somebody. Somebody give me an amen. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody tonight? Come on. I've been through some mud lately and I'm just coming out hot saying, come on devil, what you got? Praise the Lord. Because God's word says that he's faithful and I want to share some scriptures with you. So um, just to kind of share you know, a little bit more what he's saying. It's like sometimes we fight so hard, but you know, we can only do so much with what uh, we've done so far, if that makes sense. It's like, you know, these new, uh, this new devil, this new situation, this new intimidation, this new thing that's coming up and roaring at us, you know, we can't uh, fight back with the same manna that we we used way back when, you know, we got to find fresh revelation, we got to find a fresh word, we can't live on bread alone, but by every word of God, that rhema word, that hot off the press word, that's what's going to encourage you, that's what's going to give you that aha moment, that's what's going to shine light on what it is that you're fighting at, so that you can take authority over it, come on.
So it's like uh, the same things you did in the past, this, the, the, the season in the past, you can't do in this season. You can't do the same thing you did yesterday, today. You got to do it. God's doing a new thing. He's do, he wants you to grow. He wants you to develop. He wants you to take on strategy and he wants you to find fresh revelation on what his word says about it. And, and when, you, when you learn a new word, when you find a new scripture that speaks to you, leaps out to you, the enemy is going to come up and try to rob it. So this is where we have to stand on that word. This is where the fighting comes in play because, you know, we want to take hold of that word and we don't want him to come and rob and steal it from us. We want to we wanna beat him up with it. Come on. So, you know, maybe in the past we've prayed for 30 minutes. You know, maybe in the past we've fasted for three days. Maybe in the past we've worshiped for only three songs. But God's saying, I want you to come deeper. I want you to come higher. I want you to press in longer. I want you to spend more time in the word. I want you to develop an ear for my, my voice. I want you to hear me. I want you to develop sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want you to be even more obedient. I want you to be immediately obedient. Come on, before, yeah, you were obedient, but it took me three days convincing you to do what I've called you to do. Come on, let's get real. It's like, let's let's get to that point where, where we're so dedicated, we're so determined that uh, no matter what it takes, we're going to do it. Maybe we fasted three days before and God's calling us higher. He wants you to do a, a Daniel fast for seven days. Maybe he doesn't want you to fast food, but you need to fast electronics because electronics is in your face more than you're in God's face. He wants that one-on-one -on -one connection so he can give you strategies so that he can give you uh, the scriptures, so he can give you revelation and wisdom and divine connections to get you to where he's taking you. But we can't take shortcuts. We can't assume that God's just going to do all the work. We can't assume that it's a one and done deal. We're constantly growing. We're constantly maturing. We're constantly experiencing new things. And it takes the fruit of the Spirit. It takes the, the Word of God. It takes the power of the blood of Jesus to get us to, over, to, to overcome those things. And it takes a fresh word of God to know so. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Jesus says if you're thirsty, if you, if you get wore out, if you just, I don't know about you, but if you get to the point where you're just fighting and fighting and fighting like I was the past couple of weeks, it was like, I don't know how I got here, but I'm here <laughs> and I'm starving for a word. I am starving for revelation. I'm thirsty for revelation. I'm thirsty for a touch of God. I need heart rehab. I need I need transformation. I need development. I need pruning. I need I need leveling up. I need maturing. I need something. I need a touch from God because what I'm doing now isn't working anymore. What I'm doing now is not getting me through what it is God's calling me to do. And it's just it's just, I feel like I'm just hitting a wall and I can't get through it. But God is saying, I want to equip you. I'm the one that can equip you and give you what it is that you need. Come on, we just got to come to him to get that. He says in John 4, Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again. And anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artesian spring within gushing fountains of everlasting life. He provides that that, that, that he satisfies that thirst. He gives us that life-giving water where we can't go dry. Come on. He gives us that revelation that, that uh, draws us to move forward. Come on. Matthew 5 said, Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, we can see right here there's a promise. So when you're thirsty, when you're hungry, praise God. Because when he, he wants you hungry, he wants you thirsty because he can satisfy that. Only he can fill your cup. Only he can can break down those barriers. Only he can heal that heart. Only he can, can, you know, heal that pain and that suffering and that, that, uh, hurt, you know, that the enemy or the world has caused you. We live in a fallen world, man. Life happens, but we, we're not in this alone. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you we're not in this alone, that Jesus is our way maker. But, you know, when we do that, it takes sacrifice. It takes that consecration life. It takes that coming aside and saying, Lord, I can't do this on my own. You've called me to this, yes, but I need you to do it. I need you to be with me to do it. I need you to equip me to do it. I need your grace upon me. Your grace is sufficient. I, I know that I need that, Lord. I, I'm, I'm pressing in. I'm, I'm crying out. I'm asking you, show me how. 
you know, and, and he's, he'll show you little adjustments that are necessary. The, the routine in your daily life might need to change in order for you to, to do what he's called you to do, in order to make it easier, in order to make it more smooth, you know. Sometimes one adjustment can unlock the grace of God in order to make the, the shift in your season just, in order for your season to just shift into gear, you know. So it just takes that one adjustment, but we got to come inside and find out, Lord, what is that adjustment? And fasting or, or praying or seeking his face in worship or reading the word even more, even longer until that revelation hits you. You know, it's it's that sacrifice. I'm not going to go uh, out on Monday nights. I'm going to dedicate Monday nights only to you, Lord. It's me and you Monday nights because if I don't get that one-on-one -on -one time, then I'm not going to receive the revelation I need in order to do what you call me to do. If I don't get that one-on-one -on -one time with you on Monday nights, then the rest of my week is just going to be chaotic and confusing and just hard. Lord, I need this one-on-one -on -one connection because I need to see your face because I need to know that that I know that I know that you've got my back that you'll never leave me you'll never forsake me I need to know that your word is true so I'm going to come aside and I'm going to get in your presence so that you can show me and remind me and renew my strength amen praise the Lord so it takes sacrifice you know in Mark 9 it says for everyone will be seasoned with fire and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt so we see that the sacrifice isn't just to torment the sacrifice isn't a torment tool it's not a, 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 a disciplinary action where you're in trouble no sacrifice is necessary for the salt to produce that salt you know we're called to be salt and light we need we need that that consecrated lifestyle so people see the difference they don't know the difference between uh, those living in the world and those dedicated to Christ until they see those sacrifices that you make man they see that that the lifestyle that you don't that you do a different lifestyle man you don't do the same as everybody else you're different they don't know why they don't know how but they see it and that's that takes that dedicated lifestyle that consecrating coming aside and saying I'm not gonna do it the way everybody else is gonna do it I'm gonna do it the way God's called me to do it amen he says in Matthew 5, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So we don't want to leave a bitter taste in people's mouths. Come on, we don't want to just start something and, and, and not finish it. We don't want to just, you know... Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, experience the revelation and then not share the revelation. We want to we want to take hold of what God's given us and share it with the world. We want to dis disperse it into everybody's lives. You know, we want to leave a room that that's that we want to enter a room and then leave it better than it, it was when we showed up, right? We want to we want to be a light in a dark place and that comes with light and the salt of the of the sacrifice that that we we dedicate to God as worship. You know, Acts 2 says um, that it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. There, there's a time where we just come aside and we say, Lord, pour out your spirit upon my flesh. His word says upon all flesh. Nobody's left out of this scripture. He said all flesh. He's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh all flesh are you ready for the spirit of god to just be poured out on you where you will have visions you will have dreams you will have impartation and activation into what god's called you to do you got to come aside in order for him to do that you got to allow him you got to cry out to him you got to say lord i need a fresh vision lord i need a a dream i need a confirmation i need an answer to this prayer lord i need you to move hallelujah and we do that by by consecrating and crying out to him in order for him to do so amen he wants one-on-one -on -one action he's not gonna it's not fast food it's not drive-through with God <laughs> he doesn't do drive-bys you know he doesn't say oh you want number two with a, a large french fry and a dr. pepper with some hot sauce ding there you go have fun now he wants to get to know you he wants to see your face he wants to share stories he wants to reveal to you the more he wants to reveal to you his promises he wants to reveal 
reveal to you his heart and what he desires because we ultimately want what he desires when we have what he wants then his word says you know uh if, if I have my words abide in you and you abide in me, ask what you will and it shall be done. We got to shift our desires. It's not our desires, God. It's your desires that we want. So we want to press in and cry out to God to reveal those to us, to show us his desires so that we can move on and, and do what it is that he's called us to do. You know, I was thinking about what has been happening the past couple of weeks and how I've been experiencing a lot of the 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 mental warfare and God showed me he was like you you're trying to step into an anointing without the process of what is required to to receive that anointing to receive that impartation to receive that that uh, grace you know his grace is sufficient yes but if we take shortcuts and we don't come aside and allow God to impart that in us allow him to heal us you know maybe you've got some open wounds that God needs to heal in order for him to open then the door to the next chapter of your life you know he it takes that coming aside that that part of the process in order for him to activate the next Next, in order for him to open that next door that to, to answer that next prayer uh, you know he, he might be saying you've got some open wounds that I need to heal and, and so you got to come aside so I can do that for you uh, you know if we if we see somebody else walking in revelation and we think oh it's that easy well then I'll just do that you know and, and we don't know the behind the scenes that they've had to fight we don't know the battles that they had to go through in order to step in and walk into the revelation that they've received Amen. You know, they they can share with you the revelation uh, and, and we can hear it and we can retain it and we can uh, agree with it, you know, but there's a part of the process in order to step into it. There's a part of the process in order to say, ah, that's, that's it. That's it. Praise God. Nothing in this world can take that from me because when you fight for a revelation, come on, when you had to fight to get to where you are today, you don't forget. That sticks with you for the rest of your life. And not only that, but there's power behind it. There's an anointing behind it because God was with you every step of the way. And there's this unity. There's this covenant. There's this relationship where it's like, come on, devil. I've got the power of the Holy Ghost living inside of me. And his word says, greater, greater is he that is in me than he. That's you that's in this world, dumb devil. Get behind me. Amen. And there's, there's a confidence that rises up because I've come too far. I've fought too many situations to turn back now to give in to you right here right now amen and it's like sometimes it's just takes that that revelation to give you that gusto but we gotta we gotta let God work it in us we gotta let God uh, you know break it in and, and get deep and saturated in that word amen so I was thinking about that. I was like, you know, it, it, God reminded me about David and Goliath and David's story about how you know Saul you know, David went to Saul because Goliath had approached them, right? And nobody in the camp wanted to fight Goliath because they saw this this giant, right? And they were like, oh, Lord, this giant's huge. We can't take him on. What are we going to do? Well, David comes up, and I know all y'all know this story, but I'm going to repeat it anyways because it's good. David comes up, and he's like, what's going on? And Saul is like, or then his brothers are like, we've got this giant. And David's like, I can take that giant. And they're like, what? So he goes and he tells Saul, the king, he says, King Saul, let your servant, you know, approach this giant and take him down for you. And Saul's like, what? And he's like, I've, I've watched over your sheep. I've tended your sheep and I've slaughtered a bear and a lion. And I, I think that's, yeah, a bear and a lion with my own bare hands. I could take this giant down. And uh, Saul's like, all right then, you know, I mean, he, he had the testimony, come on, he had the testimony of what happened behind the scenes that gave him that boldness, that courage, that strength to say, I can take this down, watch me. And, and he's like, all right, man, but what does he do? He, 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 Saul sees this, this person, this man, this boy, come on, this little kid, teenager maybe, I'm not sure, but he sees him approach him with more boldness and, and courage, but he's not equipped. He sees him unequipped and he said, well, here, give, let me give you my gear. Let me give you my, my, uh, my armor. And, uh, I'm going to actually read it for you because there's, this part's good. It says, 
But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out and after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be one of them. Come on, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and let the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and he tried to walk for he had not tested them. He had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag and in a pouch which he had, and he slung, and his sling in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. I see here it's like he, he said, I, I can't walk in, in your revelation. I got to walk in mine. And he goes and he picks up those five smooth stones. Those are like your five uh, scriptures that you know that you know that God spoke to you and gave you revelation on that, that gives you the faith and the power and the authority to overcome circumstances because you've tested them before. You stood on them before. And, and the Lord is saying, I've got... I've got scriptures, I've got a revelation that I need you to, I've got testimonies, come on, I've got tests that you need to go through so that you can earn a testimony, so that you can overcome this giant for your neighborhood, for your family, for your church, for your nation, amen, come on. There are giants in the land and it's our job to overcome them, it's our job to take them out, but it's going to take the rev our revelation, our fresh revelation, it's going to take our consecrated lifestyle, our consecrated created dedicated relationship with Christ to overcome those things and to to find out what that revelation is amen you know uh I was thinking about that and I was like well Lord that's 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 not easy like that that takes work that takes effort you know that takes sacrifice that takes time you know sometimes we want to skip steps because we don't we don't want to waste the time we don't want to wait we want to we want to skip the steps and just just get to the goal and and the Lord will give you visions come on when you get saved he'll give you a, a calling I mean he'll give you an assignment of, of what it is he's called you to do but it doesn't mean you're necessarily there yet to do it he's gonna he's gonna show you the promise and then he's gonna help you walk along through fire to reach that promise amen and so it's a process it's a process we can't rely on other people's uh, testimonies we can't only rely on we can't only rely on I should say to to help their faith get us through circumstance we got to stretch our own faith we got to stand on our own faith we got to feed our own faith in order to to overcome certain things in order to overcome the process to reach that destination to reach that promise that God's given us. Amen. In Luke 22, uh, 31, 32 in the Passion Translation, this really ministered to me because it was like, this is what, this is what it's all about. Like I see it right here. It says, uh, Jesus is talking and he says, Peter, my dear friend, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Satan has obtained permission to come and sift you all like we and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this, after you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your lifelong mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. So we can see here that the test comes to build our faith. And once our faith is strengthened, we use that faith to share the gospel with others, to share the testimony and the revelation with others, with those around us who may not have the same faith that we have to encourage them on their journey. Amen. So how bad do you want it? I'm here to encourage you and to, to, to um, remind you that it takes a process. It takes effort. It takes sacrifice. It takes obedience to, to do what God's called us to do right here, right now, because this is what's going to take us to the next. This is what's going to uh, prepare us for what God wants to bless us with. There's an outpouring of His Spirit, and we got to come aside to receive it. There's a healing power working and moving inside of us. we got to come aside and allow God to, to, to work that, to manifest that, to provide that for us. There's a promised land out there that he's calling you to. And you know, the promised land, when I was, when I was younger, I used to think promised land meant a, a, a place. 
It's like, oh, the Lord's calling me to uh, Africa to be a missionary or promised land. The Lord's calling me to California to go to Bible college or, oh, promised land. God's calling me to New York because it's beautiful and, and it's gorgeous. And it's like the promised land isn't a place. The promised land is a position. Come on. Promised land is a position. We got to take back our position. We got to gain our position in Christ. I shouldn't say gain. We got to reinstate. We got we to gotta take back our place seated at the right hand of the Father. And that takes revelation. That takes knowledge. It takes wisdom. That takes right choices and strategic planning and, and authority to overcome the giants that are in our land. Come on. God's called us to occupy the land. And we've got to take out some giants, but it's going to take revelation to do so. So if you've heard, if you've learned anything from this tonight, if you've taken anything from this tonight, I want to stretch you to get hungry, to be thirsty for a touch of God, for an impartation of his power, of his healing power working in you and through you. Uh, come aside, spend time, dedicate a time to God this week. Dedicate a time to God. Set up a date with God to say, Lord, I need a touch from you. Lord, I'm tired of doing things my way. I'm tired of trying to figure it out myself. Lord, I'm tired of forcing it and, and controlling it when I don't have the strength or the power or the energy to do so. Lord, I'm tired of manipulating. I'm tired of, of begging. I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm tired. And I'm hungry for your revelation. I'm hungry for a fresh revelation. I'm hungry for the rhema word for me personally. Not what everybody is saying on Facebook. I want to hear your voice for myself. I want to know that I know that you're talking to me. The word says that my sheep know the sound of my voice. But the sheep got to come aside. We got to come to the shepherd. We got to come to the one who speaks. And, and remove all the distraction. Remove all the other talk and all the other voices and all the other um, uh, hang-ups and, and, and letdowns that are, are constantly poking at us and pulling at us. And we got to give God our full attention. And when he does that, he restores us. He restores our, our faith. He renews our strength. He gives us key points. He gives us revelation scripture. He gives us strategic knowledge and wisdom that, that help us make the next choice the next step that's necessary to get us through the process we can accelerate the process in jesus name god can accelerate the process as long as as we are willing and obedient to continue to follow him every step of the way we can't let pain keep us back from moving forward we can't let exhaustion keep us from what god has for us we can't let doubt and fear intimidate us from stepping out and stepping into all that god has for us we can't rely on everybody else's faith to keep fighting our battles for us come on he's calling us higher he's calling us higher he wants our relationship to go deeper he wants us to to work for it he wants us to want it he wants us to fight for it he wants us to go after it with every part of our being i mean enough is enough i don't know about you but last two weeks enough is enough i'm about it's like all right all right you've got my attention now devil and and i, I have some things to say to you and they're the word of God they're, they're what God says about it okay and it just it just because I mean enough's enough man you get to a point in this process where it's like look I ain't got time for this anymore we got to move on we got to take ground we got people to see we got things to do and, and enough's enough <laughs> so I hope this encouraged you I thank you so much for watching I love seeing all y'all's comments let me look back here and see. I see Jackie. Hey, girl. What's up? Ooh, April's online. Hi, April. And we got Anisia in the house. <laughs> what up, Anisia? Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for my dose of devotion. I really hope this encouraged you. I hope this blessed you. Let's not skip steps. Let's take every step full of courage and boldness. Amen and allow God to do what only he can do in us and through us. Praise God. There's so much more. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. Have a good evening, and I'll see you next week. God bless you. <laughs>